a beautiful day at the Rochefort Brothers Winery. The smell of charcuterie and fine tobacco and wine wafted their way into the noses of passers-by. Sam and Nick have been summoned to the estate by their father Fred Hyde to discuss the ending down of the storied and noble vineyard. They have a grand time regaling each other with stories of business victories and jet-setting adventure while Sam's new wife listens on enraptured by the charismatic gentleman. What could possibly go awry on such a day? I told him straight up, if you keep fucking around, I'm gonna drive down to your kid's preschool and I'll shoot you in the mouth with a fucking rifle. I'm gonna drive a truck carrying lead ingot 112 miles an hour right through your fucking family Tahoe. And I'll laugh the entire way. I'll freeze you and then thaw you. Doesn't bother me. You know how long it takes blood to freeze? <laughs> a week. And then when you get out and you're thawing out, I'll hit you with a fucking baseball bat in the front of the kneecap. I told you, I'll cut your fingers off, one by one, and I'll keep you there for an odd amount of time. Fuck, I'll put old calendars on the wall to throw you off. I'll give you a cell phone just to think you're gonna get out. But every number you call, it's me. The maestro. The maestro. Oh, and you're calling and calling and you think you're gonna get out and you think you're gonna see the light of day. And guess what? When I put my little maze together, in the end of it, I'm gonna be standing there, ready to fuck, and kill, and eat. He refunded me the $30 immediately. We're here in the vineyard. It's a beautiful Wednesday. Nothing could be more perfect. Time to come clean, big guy. Why the long face? It's me, Sam. I'm the problem. Your brother doesn't like having to deal with me. Disagreement is in the air, and while neither of the lordly kinsmen have much stomach for such indelicate topics, aristocracy must sometimes yield to pragmatic concerns. It would seem Nick has a quibble with Sam's wife's most unsavory pedigree, but Sam is a man of passion and a man in love. Will the day be spoiled, or will the Vermont boys find a way to turn these sour grapes into sweet fruits? Now you might think she's ordinary trash, okay? I'll have you know this. When I found her, she was. She was in a drug house getting plowed by Jamaicans, and we had a very real AIDS scare on our hands there. But now she's my princess. I know you love her, but why? And I know what's not the like about a girl who does only anal. What's the best part about a girl who never has vaginal sex? Because she can't, because she's sore. Tell you what, big guy, once we get to our secret childhood hideout and we get a load of those sweet ocean views, you're gonna be feeling right as rain. He's already gone ahead, he knows the way. Teach you to sell my grandmother's necklace, you fucking crack pig. Right up here, past the thorn branches. <laughs> Won't you die? What's going on, Bossa Nova? Just watched you whip my wife in the face with a branch. That's not what happened. Her fucking Peyton Manning shoulders bumped, probably bumped him into him and uh, swung her big fucking softball hips around, probably whacked herself down. I don't know. These junipers aren't hard enough to hit anybody. I'm sick of you and your crackhead girlfriends blaming me for everything. She's falling down flights of stairs. I mean, it's classic, uh, you know, suit ambulance chasing suit fucking uh, suit chasers. And you tell me that's the official story, El Presidente? Yeah! Yeah, I can't... Every time she falls down through a fucking mirror and cuts herself with a shard of glass in the middle of a fucking dinner party, it's my fucking fault? It's my wife, Nick. You don't go beating her. You don't go hitting her. That's my wife. And I don't want to see my brother beating and hitting on my wife. You understand me? 
If you and your crackhead want to cook up schemes or I'm hitting your branch with a wife and hip tossing her down a flight of stairs or running her over with my fucking car, you know, you stay the fuck out of my way then. Don't come see me. Don't come over. First of all, before you go blame anybody, this isn't going to do squat to anybody. Watch. Nothing. That's nothing. She's got weak, she's got thin skin. And you know how you get thin skin? Being homeless, having hepatitis, having low vitamins, not eating full meals. Oh! Oh! That's my wife, Nick! Eating napkins, eating paper because you, that's all you have left. Mixing water and paper and drinking it because you're homeless and you're not smart. Uh, let's see, what else? Having a urinary tract infection for five years. One little whip? Nothing. Look, you just saw it. You calling me a liar? I'm your brother. I'll never forget. This is a true story about your wife. The one you, your one that you beloved, your beloved wife. She looks me dead in the eye across the Thanksgiving Day table and she goes like this. I sucked a guy's dick with hepatitis. You're my brother. We grew up together. We went to the beach. We built sandcastles. We rode our bikes. We put a board against a tire and we drove off the fucking board. And, and now you bring these fucking junkies home and I'm supposed to look at you fucking seriously in the eye and say, that's my brother? That's my brother's fucking girlfriend? That's insane! That's fucking out of your, out of your mind! Your girlfriend, you're fucking, you're buying her a hot meal? You get to fuck her up the ass for a hot meal? Big fucking deal, dude! And I know it's cheap, but who cares at this point? What the fuck is the deal? Jerk off with a fucking wet zip tie for all I give a shit, it's the same thing! I don't give a shit anymore, dude! Fucking bringing these fucking beat junkies around with black eyes and fucking busted out teeth and broken noses and band-aids all over their fucking face and cuts on their fucking fingers and fucking stick and poke tattoos and fucking bad breath. Like, get the fuck out of here with that, man. Fucking fake drug addict philosophy bullshit I gotta deal with every time you wanna bring one of these fucking fucking shopping bags full of slop home. You take them seriously, you give me this long drawn out thing, or you love them and shit like that, and I gotta be like, oh yeah, he love he loves her. My wife's looking at me like I'm fucking crazy. She's waiting when I'm gonna take the turn. Then I'm gonna go to the fucking shelter and find something to stick my kick up the ass for fucking three months until she steals my mom's fucking Mercedes or her mom's Mercedes or her Birkin bag or whatever. Nick, Nick, Nick. And one thing I know about my wife, she's clumsy, sure. She'll fall down the stairs, bump her head sometimes, bonk her eye sockets. But I know she didn't do this to herself this time. That slash on her face, that's from a whipping. My wife's on the ground, slashed up from a thorny branch. And I heard somebody in these woods saying they were gonna whip her in the face and kill her and knock all her teeth out. Did you whip her? If your fucking Winona Ryder crackpot fucking broken head car accident girlfriend wants to fucking run around and slam her head into fucking tree trunks, that's your fucking fault. I'm not gonna stay here and get blamed for every time she wants to fucking, you know, slam her fingers into car doors and, you know, shred her thighs over a Nine Inch Nails song. That's, that's her prerogative. This is, none of this is my fault. You're right. What am I thinking? Distrusting my own brother. Okay. Let's go drink in those ocean views. You owe me 300 fucking dollars. 